Lizards and snakes, the squamates, are the most diverse non-avian reptiles alive today. They have adapted to every possible tweak of a sprawl-legged long-tailed body plan imaginable. Some are short and fat, others long and skinny, some lost their legs, some evolved venom glands. Though there were lizard-like animals before the separation of the reptile family tree into the true lizards, their evolutionary history begins some 200 million years ago. Their fossil record is spotty, with most coming from the northern continents, or Laurasia. Any new pieces of data to fill out gaps in lizard evolution help to get a better understanding of their diversity prior to more recent times. A brand new Cretaceous lizard has been described from amber from one of the more politically tumultuous countries, Myanmar. The amber mines of Kachin State, northern Myanmar, form a series of amber deposits that stretch over a time frame of 110 to 72 million years ago. Amber deposits from other parts of the region date from 99 million years ago. These amber deposits are famous for many reasons. Chief among them is the incredible quality of the fossils preserved within the amber. The deposits are more infamous for their human rights violations, which I will also touch on. Many lizards and snakes, preserved in such detail as to appear freshly freeze-dried, have been found in these Myanmar amber deposits. Most lizard-bearing fossil sites from other parts of the world only preserve bits, pieces, and chips of what were once lizards and snakes, so Myanmar offers a very rare insight into the world of the small. A world which is more important to the understanding of ecology and changes in the world's climate. This is the kind of stuff that aids us in our day-to-day -day lives, as the more smaller organisms from a given time and place are known, the more data points you have to corroborate the health of an ecosystem over time. On top of that, the amber from Myanmar has been interpreted to represent the remains of an island ecosystem. This region was once a series of islands during the Cretaceous, so the ecological data recovered from the amber is even more important and rare as island fauna are rarely recovered from the fossil record. All the way back in 2019, <laughs> God, I missed the pre-plague times, a couple of scientists bought a piece of amber from a government-licensed gem dealer in a Myanmar government-approved show. Yes, this specimen is ethically sourced. The citrine gem was exported legally from Myanmar, where it was placed within the collections of the Peretti Museum in Switzerland. In order to get the clearest images of the critter inside the amber, the research team included Andres Chernansky, Edward Stanley, Juan Daza, Arnaud Bolet, J. Salvador Arias, Aaron Bauer, Marta Vidal Garcia, Joseph Bevet, Adolf Peretti, Nia Nia Young, and Suzanne Evans. Sent the damn thing off to Melbourne, Australia to get laser shot by a micro CT scanner. Blackburn Lab was the one where it was scanned and thanks to their work, we now have access to this amazing three-dimensional model. You do not know how much I wish I could 3D print this sumbish, but I don't know how to sculpt digitally and this little guy would be a pain in the ass to print with all the supports it would need. The lizard was given the name Retinosaurus comtiensis. Retin is a Greek word generally given to any resinous liquids, and obviously Saurus is Greek for lizard. The species name comes from the locality where the fossil was found, Hecamti. So the specimen is basically the front half of the lizard, the skull, the neck and back vertebrae, parts of the shoulders and the front limbs. Retinosaurus also preserved the skin and scales covering the bones. To butter your science biscuits a little more, the specimen also preserved the lizard's trachea and bronchi. This little guy is 35 millimeters long, but since it was cut in half and lizards have super long tails, the whole animal may have been triple that length. All indications suggest this lizard was just a wee baby when it got slammed and deaded. A worthy sacrifice to the stone gods. Just in case you were wondering what those indications were, the skull roof is not fully fused as it would be in an adult lizard, and the little guy has absolutely enormous peeper holes. Baby lizards have disproportionately large eye holes. Oh, also, the bones of the entire skeleton are not completely fused, so it's definitely a juvenile. I'll get more into it here shortly, but its immaturity can obscure how to classify it amongst close relatives, so keep that in mind. With all that good anatomy stuff covered, what the hell is this lizard? 
thanks to the completeness, but not thanks to it being a juvenile, where Tinosaurus was a little bit of a pain in the ass to identify. That's also because the fossil record of other lizards from the same time across the world is so fragmented that Retinosaurus would come out in the family tree at weird places. In all the analyses conducted by the research team, it placed in and around the Skinkoidea, or as other authors might label it, Skinkomorpha or Skinkiformata. I just love modern phylogenetics and taxonomy, don't you? The researchers made sure to cover their asses when it came to the possibility of the specimen's immaturity obscuring their analyses. When the team of researchers made sure to obscure features of Retinosaurus that may change as it grows, they found that Retinosaurus was identified as an Amphisbanian lizard in one test and a Panzantusid in most other tests. Retinosaurus was also found to be a Panzantusid when the features which might change as it grew were included, so Panzantusid seems to be closer to right on the money. Oh yeah, Zantusids are the wall lizards. 1 to 5 inch long, cute little things currently living in North and Central America. This conclusion is open to being proven wrong. If the identification of Retinosaurus as a Panzantusid is corroborated, then its presence in Myanmar suggests that these lizards had a much wider distribution in the past. Retinosaurus and Myanmar amber comes from the Cretaceous period. The Zantusid lizards diverged from the girdled lizards during the Jurassic period. Myanmar was still connected to the north coast of East Gondwana at the time, which means the island arc could not have moved from Gondwana to the southeastern Asian position it is at now until the early Cretaceous. Therefore, the ancestors of Retinosaurus may have survived on these islands for 50 million years or so, while another lineage moved into North America before going extinct everywhere else but North and Central America. I think the researchers who published this find did about as good a job of being as ethical as possible with Amber as they could. They made sure to get a paper trail, invoices, and customs forms for the specimen and make it publicly available. They also made sure to get this find from a government licensed gem dealer. Obviously you can't just take the word of the government, so they also looked into the company who was in control of the mining operations that acquired the specimen to sell. The Sea Sunstar Company was the one in control of the mining operations at the time this fossil was recovered, and they are not listed by the UN Human Rights Council as taking part in the Myanmar conflict. That Myanmar conflict being the latest in a half century or more long series of conflicts originating in various uprisings, independence revolutions, and ethnic-based armed militias. The issue with Myanmar Amber is that the sale of the Amber may go to fund the Kachin conflict, which boils down to Kachin insurgents from northern Myanmar fighting government soldiers for independence with both sides inflicting atrocities against one another. Among fossils, those included in Fossil Amber are some of the best. They provide the only definitive window into the soft tissues of extinct organisms and trap animals that may have never become fossils to begin with, like bugs. Retinosaurus provides just one more data point in the evolution of lizards during the Cretaceous period. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.